All right. So let's let's focus on I think the the main the the number one thing I want to upgrade is center field. Jazz is the guy. Like it's Jazz, right? Like there he's just he's such a good fit. He plays the position well. He hits the ball, he hits for power. He he's a good base runner. He can steal you some bases. You can even play him at second base if you need him to, but I, I think Jazz is the guy. And, and you see the two there next to his name. It means that he's still got two more years, um, two more years on his contract, you know, of team control after this. So like he's he's the guy. He's he's the number one target for this team going into this trade deadline. He helps solve a huge glaring need. And yeah, there's some blue on that baseball savant page, but look at the top where it says value, right? It's mostly red, right? So he's he's a good player. Uh, and he plays a premium position. You don't need to be a great hitter to be a pretty good center fielder. And he can he can field, he can run, and he can hit the ball just fine. So Jazz is my number one guy. Just to kind of go through this list too. Jose Siri is another guy who I think I'd be cool with getting. Uh, Jose Siri is essentially what we hoped Michael A. Taylor would have been this year. If we're being mm-hmm. honest, like if if you look at Jose Siri's page and you and you just replace his name with Michael A. Taylor, you'd have been like, ah, cool. That's that's not a bad season for Michael A. Taylor. So like he's he's kind of on that list too. The the, the third and fourth choices there are kind of more. I don't think they're going to happen. I don't think JJ Bladé is going to happen. I don't think there's any reason for the A's to give up JJ Bladé. He's got four more years of team control. He's super cheap. He's good. He seems to be figuring it out. Seems to be the kind of guy the A's want to hold on to. Uh, Luis Robert, I think, is just going to cost too much. Um, so I, I, you know, I have him down there too. But Jazz is the guy. Jazz is the guy for center field. You've got to upgrade that position. There's no one internally who can play it. I don't. I don't feel comfortable putting anybody on the roster and center field in a game that you need to win. So yeah, jazz is the guy. I guess my question here would be, well, let me start with Jose Siri here. Why would the race trade him? Because you just mentioned the team control. Siri has a lot of it. And I know, I know that rays are occasionally just what the rays do. do. Yeah, they are insane. (laughs) What they do. And, Truthfully, I I might be more comfortable with Siri than I am Jazz. To be honest, maybe Ooh. I'm crazy here. Wait, you of all people, Mister? I hate I'm the strikeout. Here. Jazz strikes out a bunch too. Uh, nowhere near what Siri does. Yeah, they both strike out a lot. At that mm, point, Siri it's strikes out a lot, a lot. But what I actually wanted to ask Jim here is because we were on with Jason and Jason was kind of shying away from Jason Mackey. I should say he was shying away from Jazz Chisholm. I think maybe because a little bit of the personality of jazz, Denardo wasn't on, on that episode. I'm curious, just both your opinions on his fit in the clubhouse. (laughs) I'll I'll say this. Go ahead. He's, he's a personality for sure. So, you know, and when it comes to clubhouses, like, yeah, I mean, I do follow the Marlins, you know, slightly more than most MLB teams. I can't, I can't speak so much as most people can't. I know there's a lot. I mean, everyone, mostly everyone saw the video of him dumping the Gatorade bath on Jessica. I think Blaylock is what her name is. Um, I think that's her, but the, the, or the Marlins, everyone saw that. Yeah. It was kind of a dick move, <laughs> but honestly, like jazz has so much swag, so much personality. And I feel like with this clubhouse, there's people that can definitely bond with. And I also feel like there could be people that he definitely doesn't bond with. So I don't know. And, and that's 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 a good point of view. I mean, you don't want to mess up a, a clubhouse, right? I, I don't know. That's going to be an answer for them to figure out. Um, but like, I love jazz. I love jazz. Like as the person, as the player. I think he's awesome. And you know what? As Rob said here, yeah, they signed Grandall, who literally fought people. (laughs) So they had no problem signing Grandall, uh, and he's still playing. There you go. They signed Domingo Herman, too, who 
the you know they send a lot of people yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the world was chapman yeah so, and they kept g1 bay i think here's my thing with with that first off i've never really heard a actual like like i've never heard anything all that bad about jazz chisholm like i think there's some fans who don't like him but like i've never heard a teammate come out and say like i don't like jazz i don't think i've ever heard that um and then secondly too um if you're winning it doesn't matter yeah like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what your personality is if you're winning games everybody's gonna have fun uh, and they're going to like you around uh, the clubhouse. And and what Jazz Chisholm does is he he basically doubles your offensive output from the center field position. And that's that's not even like being hyperbole. That's not hyperbole. That's not exaggerating. He doubles his he doubles your out offensive output out of the position. So quite frankly, I don't care. I don't care about the other stuff. He's 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 the best fit for this team and how it's constructed. And um, he would make the most impact out of anyone acquired at this deadline. What do you guys think about other center? I mean, he's the only center fielder, I think, who, yeah. who's, who's, who's really available and moves my needle, like moves the needle at all. No, I think you're right on that. Well, he, he really is the only center fielder available that kind of is worth anything at this point. I, I don't know how I feel about him yet. I would take him obviously because he's an obvious upgrade. You're getting a multiple win player with him. I just don't know long term with Jazz how I feel about the bat because he's a, he's a league average hitter. It's what he is. You get some pop out of it. It's a guy that can run, but I don't know, man. Like at that point, I almost wonder if you're better off going the rental route. And maybe ma getting a little bit creative in center field, which I don't love, but I don't really know if I love any of the options right now. So let me throw something out there. Um, sticking with Jazz, I think it's all fair, but I also think like getting him out of Marlins Park, put him in PNC, that lefty swing, that wall there, he can play very well with, I think, too. The speed power combination he has. I mean, that's one thing. This team may be getting a little more aggressive recently, but now you're adding someone else who can give you 30 stolen bases a season easily. You know, I think he he's a catalyst as well. So, you know, yeah, the defense out there, and you saw the two diving catches today. The offense he gives you, you know, for a center fielder, being league average almost speaks quite a lot. I mean, think about what we're talking about Brian Reynolds. You know, because he's a center fielder, how valuable he is. And that's what Jazz is. You know, he's an above average offensive center fielder, which is light years ahead of a lot of center fielders. I just, I think, uh, yeah, center field is is the number one target. And there's really only one guy that makes sense. And it's Jazz. I don't think you're wrong, though. Like, yeah. I don't think you're wrong at all about Jazz being the main option here in center field. He does fill a lot of holes here. It's just, I don't, I don't know. There's something here holding me back. Um, I, I do like jazz. It's just, I don't know, man. Like it just feels like this is going to go wrong at some point. If they go jazz, here's the thing too. Jazz has enough team team control and he's talented enough that if you want to just, yeah, like if you just want to trade jazz again, you can like, he's got, he's got team control to go. Like yeah. you're going to have him for another two years, but like, I just, he's a good player. Like he's a good player and you need to get good players. He's the best available option for center field. And that is your main weakness right now. You so, know what it, you, Jim and Denardo, you know what it is? It's the fact that he is just wildly talented and still very raw. And I feel like I've been burned by that, by the Pittsburgh Pirates so many times. Honestly, from like a, he's extremely talented. He, he's, he's sort of like another O'Neill Cruz in terms of like pure talent level. And yeah, he hasn't really put it all together yet, but maybe that's also a good thing. And that like a lot of times really talented players put things together at age 27 and 28. Yeah. Like Jazz Jazz's best years may be ahead of him. So what I want to say about Jazz, I think a lot of stuff too is like injuries. You know, he had like two seasons because of injuries, he wasn't there. So you're like you look at the numbers, it's not great. He hasn't got the no notoriety in sense, but like in the past 
since 2022, which is a thousand plate appearances, like 46 home runs, 55 stolen bases. Like the guy's talented. So like I'm with Jim too. I do think the best is coming. Um, I want that to be with the Pirates. Yep. I agree. I mean, he's potentially like a, I mean, he's a 35, 35 guy potentially. Yeah. And especially you put him in a park that just fits his swing a lot better. Maybe he starts, starts hitting a few more balls over the fence. Yeah. So again, that's what really entices me about jazz. The power speed combination in center field with good enough defense. Absolutely. I'm all in for him. 